came across a product in Amazon that I thought was pretty cool. And so I decided to make my own version of it. It was a, a holler item and essentially allows you to mount your devices into that little weird area that's in the Tundra dashboard. I've used that area for sunglasses, but beyond that, anything that you put there tends to go flying. Um, even sunglasses do. So anyway, it all started with uh, essentially creating the shape out of a piece of plywood that would fit in that area. And then I took some double-sided carpet tape here and stuck a piece of um, HDPE plastic here. So this is a plastic that's used for like marine applications. Um, I think they use it for cutting boards as well. Anyway, it's a real nice material to work with. It routes nicely. Um, so here I'm using the template that I made out of half inch plywood in order to transfer that shape into the um, HDPE plastic. Um, like I was saying, it works really nicely, so you can drill holes in it, you can cut it with the table saw, with the jigsaw, whatever. Um, like you see here, I'm routing a um, beveled ed edge on it to kind of match the bevel that the truck already has. Um, and then I just cleaned it up with a little razor blade. Um, so yeah, this piece is going to insert in that dash area, and then this will bolt down to the dashboard itself, and then all my accessories will be screwed onto this plate. So it's removable um, just by removing three screws. Um, so up next, I took it over to the drill press and I drilled a couple of holes. I left the half inch plate here or the, the half inch template on there so that if I had to do a second version, I would have a template of where I put these holes. Um, the one thing to note is in the back, I should have just done one single one in the center. When I looked at where the supports were under the dashboard and the Tundra, um, where I initially drilled these holes wasn't going to work out. But the, the two in the front were perfect. So once I did this, it was time to start laying out where I wanted the pieces. So this is going to support um, my GPS unit, a GoPro, and then also um, the rear view camera for my RV. The added benefit though is because I'm using standard one inch RAM ball mount, I can switch this out to pretty much anything that I want. So any kind of other device, uh, a little for a telephone, for a cellular phone, or uh, for a walkie-talkie, that kind of thing, all very quickly to switch out. Um, so pull the, the template off here, and it shall pop. There we go. As you can see, that carpet tape really works well for holding stuff together. I'll often use that when I'm um, doing some rough design work. So the, the next thing that I realized was that the Furion, the RV, goes off a non-standard um, ball mount size. It is 16 millimeters and the standard smaller size appears to be 17 millimeters. So I bought one of these one inch to 17 millimeter adapters. Uh, and chucked that up in my lathe and then just had to take a millimeter off of it. You would be surprised though how long it takes to get a millimeter off. So there's the old suction cup mount. So I won't make you sit through all of the sanding that went on here, but it started out with some 60 grit and then once it was to the right size, I went through the higher grits from 800 up to 1500. That made a pretty nice little finish there. Um, and I was able to snap it into that um, Furion screen. This is the rear view camera for the RV. It's wireless and really helpful. So once I had that in place, they start actually setting out where the different are gonna go on 
the plate. So that Garmin adapter there is my GPS device that's stick to the and then this rear view camera. So I decided to go with the two of these on the outside um, with a ball for each of those. And then one more ball in the center that will be able to hold the GoPro. So the GoPro can be uh, behind these devices and point out the front window or get swiveled around and shoot over them to record video of me and my wife as we're driving. So once I plotted out where these should go, uh, I just made some marks and holes for the mounting balls. Our big RV trip, we were on for a month, I had all these things stuck to my window as well as my cell phone holder, which is a RAM mount cell phone holder, and the uh, tire pressure monitor system for the RV. So as you can imagine, my dashboard was just covered in suction cups and <laughs> they were all in the way. The really cool thing about having this set up is that from my eye level, when I look forward out the windshield, None of these devices block my view of anything but the hood of the truck. So I'm going to have great visibility uh, this year. Uh, not only that, it makes it nice and easy for my wife to be able to reach the GPS so she can change where we're going, add in a gas stop, that kind of thing. Uh, I think this is really going to make a huge difference and make great use of a space that was not usable. So here you just see me uh, chamfering the holes for uh, two ants, and then this one larger one that I'm gonna put in the center, and this is for the GoPro. That'll have a little larger arm on it, um, a longer arm, so I wanted to, a little bit larger support, but really matters all that much. So you could definitely purchase the item on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link to it down below. I forgot what it's called. Um, but essentially, it's the same plate without any of the ball mounts, without the arms and all that. It's a hundred bucks. Now, if, I, if I'm really honest about it, by the time I made this, bought the hardware for it, if you were also buying this piece of, um, you probably end up with that being so I'm not going to say that this saves you money, um, but it was a fun project to do. Again, I'm just chamfering all of these holes so that there's no uh, screws that are sticking down below this into the dashboard. And then up last, uh, my final item that I need to do is mount it up to the dashboard. So I drilled the template, well, with the, the dash piece base through into the dash underside. Now, if you're doing this, make sure that you check low um, that there are, are no wires. I did pull the entire stereo system out um, and I checked below these spots to make sure that I wasn't gonna hit some wires. There are a number of wires in through this area. So make sure that you're careful if you're gonna do this. So the, whole size of the screw, I went through and expanded that hole with larger drill bits so that the rib nuts will fit in. Um, I'm using three rib nuts that are five millimeters. So once I got the first one drilled out, I installed that first rib nut. That way I could mount the plate in place and use it to use the screw to hold this in place while I drilled the other two holes. Um, the first time I tried to use a washer on the bottom, but the rib nut didn't grab it. Uh, I was a little concerned that the rib nut was going to try and expand the plastic and somehow crack it. Uh, but in all three of them, that wasn't a problem. So I don't think that was a concern. The plastic didn't seem very brittle. Um, I was worried that, you know, it's a 10 year old truck and obviously the dashboard's in the sun all the time. So I, was a little concerned, but I guess for no reason. 
So once you get the rib nut mounted in there, you unscrew the tool, and then we put the plate on there. The thing that I liked about this is it makes it really easy for me to install or uninstall this plate. And because it's just the rib nuts that are there when I take it out, it's easy to just toss the factory rubber pad that came with it on top of this and you would never know that this existed. So this is a, a modification that you could kind of quickly undo. Obviously you still have the holes there, but um, it would be something that wasn't visible. So I, you saw me there checking underneath to make sure that there were no wires in the way before I went ahead and drilled these next two holes. If you do enjoy this kind of stuff, please subscribe and like the video. That really does help the channel. Um, it allows me to keep on making stuff like this because if I know people are enjoying it, it just makes me that much more excited to share these kinds of projects with you. Um, one of the next videos that I have ready to go just about is um, on the upgraded stereo that you probably saw in the opening of this video. So that's a DeSaita Android unit, and it's a real game changer, but there's some important things to know about when you're installing it. So um, some of the settings that you have to tweak and whatnot, I'll be definitely sharing those in the video, but it's a really reasonable head unit as far as cost goes, it's about 500 bucks, um, and really brings this truck into the 22nd century. So same process as before, after I drilled the initial